Hey everybody, welcome to a new Record Club episode of the Jams and D podcast, and we are going to be discussing on this episode this week, August's recommended album. We're going to be talking about the album from Negative Land, Dyspepsy. August, why don't you tell us a little bit about Dyspepsy? All right, so to understand Dyspepsy, one must (laughs) understand the essence of Negative Land themselves, a four-piece of irreverent plunder phonics pioneers in the truest sense of the word. These were guys who completely reinvented what plunder phonics music could be in the 80s and 90s, and initially did so with their EP U2, an EP that was released in the build-up to um, uh, the band U2's album Actung Baby, posing as a single to that to said album (laughs) in which they have a song that's a heavy parrot has which is this like hilarious parody of the song the u2 song i don't know what i'm looking for called i still don't know what i'm looking for august not to not to um blunt in your point but the original song is called i still have found what i'm looking for yeah i thought i was about to lose my mind because i was just like wait a minute have i been hearing the other version of this song all these years effect is real yeah i I did not (laughs) i did not know the name of the youtube song i was just kind of going off the top of my head what is this what is the new what is the new negative land spoof called I still it's haven't nice. found what I'm looking for. It's got the 1991 same... 1991 okay, so acapella it's just the same name. Yeah, okay. Okay. And I did not realize it was just the same name. But the first song is this weird, on this EP, is this weird parody mashup that samples the song, basically making fun of the song. And then the second part is, uh, it's a radio grab of Casey Kasem just like cursing out you two and getting super mad about having to talk about you two and notably this <laughs> he calls them british for for status <laughs> yeah he says these are these guys are from england and who gives a shit <laughs> basically this this off of this like moment that I, he was either like i don't know really drunk or it wasn't didn't think he was on on mic or something he just basically goes off on this like expletive laden rant and they just kind of like cut it up and 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 layer it into this like weird uh <laughs> the great one the second track on the ep is like the melody of the song is being played with kazoos yeah um, and it's like just ridiculous and and um i'm sure i'll you'll um, you'll get into it but what's interesting about this song uh, about this ep is like not just the fact that hey they did this but also yeah. the fact that it caused an incident right it caused a lawsuit <laughs> in which they had to take this ep off the market completely because u2's record label sued negative land claiming that placing the word U2 on the cover violated their trademark, but the song itself didn't. And they used the argument that this was to deliberately confuse U2 fans, which it was, but this ended up getting this record pulled from the market completely. This uh, EP pulled from the market completely. It only exists in like a couple rare CDs here and there and dozens of youtube re-uploads of the audio yeah but it was this incident where it exposed just how how far they were willing to take their irreverence i I, faith i read somewhere as well that like they um they arranged it so that that the edge from youtube was doing like a radio interview and like they i can't remember the specifics of the story but basically they arranged it so that without knowing uh they were being he was being inter- interviewed by members of negative land yeah and, and like basically they were i can't remember what happened in the interview but i just read about it so basically they were trying to take this bit as far as they can basically take yeah. it um kendrick lamar stole this idea <laughs> <laughs> i can't I, I cannot tell you how many times i have heard the letter u and the numeral two <laughs> The letter U and the numeral two. 
yeah but basically the, if you haven't heard you two the ep it's very much in the same spirit and and sound collage style as the album we're talking about today which that of course being dyspepsy which takes the same style of just attacking an individual brand except to an even more ludicrous extreme than that ep with a full 42 minute album and that's of course what we are going to talk about today the effectiveness of this album its message and just everything in between yeah so uh obviously the title is a very clever pun on dyspepsia um which i think is 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 quite cool yeah um and so my experience with this um record is interesting i this is something that um i think morgan alluded to when we were recording our last episode is that the experience of listening to this record is singularly unpleasant uh, in a lot of ways it's also very funny like there are moments where they go straight parody uh at the sound collage stuff which is often exceedingly just overwhelming is mixed in with like original material um that uh, no, one of the kind of premier examples of that being the song uh, happy hero which mixes pepsi jingles in the background with an original sung piece yeah by the band. yeah uh, yes um that is certainly an example um other one that i particularly one that i particularly liked was the kind of quasi opening track drink it up where it basically creates a new pepsi jingle um but layers this kind of absurdism caked into the lyrics of the verse while the hook kind of seductively pulls you in um so i i thought that was pretty um smart and, and even quite catchy um and then the sound collage stuff um your milkshake <laughs> the sound call up eli the, the sound collage stuff I, I actually found for the most part more i think interesting and effective um, than some of the songs where they just kind of outright um, state what they're doing. Um, like, for instance, I will say that I actually didn't really care for Happy Hero. I, I, I kind of found it a bit preachy and blunt. That sucks. Um, Fucking hate. Carry on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, that wasn't um, a track that particularly stood out to me, but I, I, I kind of enjoyed a little bit more some of the weirder, uh, esoteric moments where you were getting these kinds of like weird collisions of, of advertising samples and uh, particularly the track Why Is This Commercial, which I think is one of the most effective ones, where you have actual samples of Pepsi executives trying to decide how best to target specific ethnic groups in their advertising and then that gets juxtaposed with like um, sports figures and forgive my ignorance, there's probably it's probably someone really famous who like is doing uh, an ad for Pepsi and stuff. So I thought that kind of stuff where they immerse you in the actual uh, content and the actual like stuff that they're um, get digging at was more effective than when they were just having songs where it's like, I am gonna, you know, uh, I'd buy that for a dollar. Pull all these kids into drinking Pepsi because I'm evil or whatever. I just, yeah, that sort of stuff wasn't. Um, a highlight for me but i really enjoyed some of the more creative and subversive stuff uh, there are specifics I, I stuff later on that i really enjoyed as well but i'll kind of stop there for now i mean the thing is like about like the thing is about some of the most like overly evil shit on this record it's like it's, it's just so often the case with things like this where it's like the thing that is the most like outlandish is actually the like the most true thing in the story often you know um, in some of the most insidious, despicable practices uh, labeled on this record, it's like, wow, that the fact that that's actually happened, and I can recall events where that's happened, is um, obscene. Um, but like, uh, just to get it out of the way, um, I enjoyed this record a lot. Um, and as I mentioned in our previous recording session, this is a great example of a time where a lot of the message is basically like, wake up, sheeple. But um, I, enjoy, <laughs> I, but I enjoyed it because it's really fun, um, and what I think is really interesting is it starts off as like 
this breezy, really sort of ham-fisted, in an entertainingly tongue-in-cheek way, parody of commercialism and advertising. And I love the way in which it frames itself as like a mock of an advert. But the more it gets into itself, it not only gets more um, pure so layers back more and more, but gets basically like, I, I feel like someone has gotten inside my brain and is rearranging it with synthesizers and samplers. Um, it just gets more and more crazy musically as you get in. And it's just this strange, like weirded, weirded out trip, like like a Morgan Spurlock movie if it was an album. God, um, that description right there is makes it sound unbearable. <laughs> a Mer- Morgan Spur- <laughs> Spurlock movie as an album would be awful. <laughs> Okay, but that if it was good, I mean, um, but I just mean like that strange sort of um, very weird uh, tr- like head trip through a bunch of themes and it gradually pe- peels layers back and it sends that the strange narrative of like an advertising campaign gone horribly wrong as the album goes on and on. I'm um, just a touch on Happy Hero, which has been criticized. I guess I enjoyed this track th- with this strange crack smile it has um i can see why this track might turn you off with this bluntness but the moment where um <laughs> it bleeps itself out referring oh, to yeah. pedophilia that, um, that part's hilarious i, it, I just crack up too every much. time that happens it's, i really it's do. a very funny gig uh, but to say, i always forget it's coming and then it happens and just left like what am i listening to um but yeah um, and yeah yeah um, i'd say that's I, that's the part where that song for me at least uh in contrast to tyler redeems itself for me with the heavy handedness of it where i'm like okay i i i can get behind the cheesiness of this for this one joke completely derailing all of that yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you. But um, I, I, I suppose the, the superior version is like the penultimate track, I guess, Aluminium or Glass, the memo, um, which blends sort of strange folk weirdness with this very ham-fisted, heavy-handed pastiche of um, materialism and advertisement culture. Um, but it's just so, it's even more absurd. But, but more spread out across the track. And the lines of like, um, with the ants in the grass, um, know the Volvo, the Adman drives or something like that. Um, considering they sample the new Seekers, I'd like to give the world a hug, I think whatever it's called, um, which was then re-recorded as I'd like to give the world a Coke later, um, which they sort of make a quasi joke on saying, I'd like to give the world a <coughs> Pepsi, <laughs> and then carry on um, in the song. Uh, it's like it's almost like the song is like a parody of that kind of song, um, and it's just it's just even though this album is super fucking heavy-handed, it's a it's a trip and it carries itself across the like punching you in the face with its message. It just carries you across the weirdness and the eccentricities for just being fucking weird and baller and fun and just cr- just crazy. You know, I, I, this is an interesting moment because there's been so many times in the past where um, uh, that I or one of one of us or many of us have kind of. Uh, praise something for a kind of blunt sincerity or a kind of bluntness to, that it has that we find really effective that August finds a bit trite and for me at least this is kind of the the turntable moment because I, right. I do find this record to be a bit trite frankly and and, and there, definitely I think the heavy handedness of it is obviously intentional and is part of its um, of what it is trying to do and part of its impact but for me it feel it turns uh, decent stretches of this record into feeling like lectures um, and I just as soon as I get on board with parts of this record something like that will come along and it will just completely zap me out of it and I mean to its credit it's not a huge part of the album it's really like I think Happy Hero is my least favorite track on the record for that reason but it does contrast with Aluminum Glass because that track does have a heavy handedness to it but that track is my favorite track on the album 
And I'll try to explain why. Um, even though it has the same sort of like, the lyricism is very much like, would an advertising executive understand where the homeless live? Like, bro, bro class exists, wow. But like, yeah, sure, okay. But the song itself is great. Like it is this fuzzed out alt rock track. It has these crooning vocal ooze. Um, the tune is so good. Um, and, and the sense of, I guess, irony and, 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 and parody in those lyrics really kind of feels in tune with the music here. Uh, and the music itself is just really enjoyable. The continual piling on of sounds, like random sounds over top of this tune is great as well. I love that aspect of what Negative Land do, that sense of like, uh, just abstract uh, chaos. Uh, plus yeah, this yeah. song also has a real kind of like ween by way of flaming lips energy. And I adore that so much. Uh, it, it's, it's just an aspect of the record I love so much. Uh, and that song really stands out to me. And, and interestingly, the other song that, I re that really stands out to me is something that I think uh, is really effective uh, is interestingly a, a song that is it's basically the complete opposite of this track which is the song that precedes it voices in my head uh it's the most i think the most disconcerting thing on this whole record it has this cheesy club beat that clangs away i really like the cheesiness of it, it always makes me smile um and then you have this barrage of discordant samples that just pile on top of it and they're all just kind of pulled together by this absolutely painful sample of this woman singing completely out of tune about how much she's obsessed with pepsi <laughs> and it's so fucking funny um it's, and yeah, it's almost like creepy because like it's, it feels <laughs> like she's just been possessed by a pepsi computer it's like uh, i don't know why i have to think about pepsi, pepsi, pepsi. yeah she's just going absolutely pepsi, off her nut. pepsi <laughs> Pepsi, Pepsi, and that's it's like, it's that's, like the, the memory creator from Blade Runner 2049 is just inserted Pepsi into her head. And, <laughs> and, and that stuff makes me laugh more than just like, hey, let's put the, let's bleep at hut, let's put a bleep in this where we're, but then not actually bleep the word out, which is funny in and of itself, but doesn't really, I think, add to that song and Happy Hero for me anyway. Whereas this absolute lunatic woman uh, just absolutely <laughs> spouting this uh, almost like she's crazed in her obsession with Pepsi and um, that stuff makes me fucking howl with laughter <laughs> when oh, yeah, I'm listening like... to it it's so it's just ridiculous yeah. and I love when they lean into that barrage of sound yeah I'm gonna yeah, compliment I... you on the weed comparison by the way so, so on the money yeah same yeah, year as the I, mollusk, similar kind of energies between those yeah. that song and that record. No, I mean, I, I think that's, yeah, a great point. I love the samples that are just like quite obviously real people just rambling on and on about Pepsi. And it just becomes so fucking disturbing. Like these, are these real people? Is this, are, are people genuinely this obsessed with, with like a brand? And it like the one I always think of is that little kid rambling about the the like commercial where like he's saying like and then the vending machine went <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like that's just like where do you find this shit? Who says this? And it and, and that kind of horrifyingness, like what the fuck makes it such an uncomfortable album to listen to. Yeah. Yeah, it really kind of front lines um, and, and Pepsi is just kind of emblematic of, of this particular era of American commercialization. And the, the biggest strength of this Pepsi as a record, I think, is how incisive and, and uh, direct of an insight it is into that. It's kind of like a cultural time capsule. Um, and obviously, like, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a culture and, and that I've only ever experienced secondhand because I never kind of grew up in it. Um, and it's kind of, it's, but it's filtered through because of the way that American society is kind of at the top of this pile of, of, of cultural influence. It has kind of filtered through in its own way to the commercialization I experienced growing up. And, but, but yeah, it, so that I think is a kind of an artifact and a record where you do, you are getting all of these varied um, samples from commercials, from TV shows, from, wherever they source this stuff from is um, I think 
some of the m most value that this record has is, is the way that those are assembled and um, uh, just put together in this really absurd way. Jake, how do you feel about this Pepsi? Um, I, I really, I feel very similarly to Sersha, honestly. I, I do really enjoy it against my better judgment because honestly, like, I feel like I should come down more mildly or even more actively angry at it. Like, uh, I'm guessing at least Morgan is. Um, just because in theory, this sounds like A, obnoxious, B, even if it was good, it doesn't sound like my thing. And, you know, C... Uh, this is just weird who knows whether or not it's gonna land with you or not but i i just enjoyed how creative it is i i liked how like you know there's the sound collage elements and like there are parts of the album where like the opening of pepsi can and like the bubbling and like sizzling part of soda is used as like a brief soundscape and i'm just like that's fucking cool. Like, who thinks of that? Like, I, I, I love that there's, like, a band that just devotes itself so wholeheartedly to this weird, kitschy shit. And I, I think the thing about it that I like is, like, it is funny uh, many different times, as, like, some people have elaborated upon, and, like, with such a, a, a glee and, like, yeah, it's heavy-handed. But the thing about it that I like the most is just how fucking demented it is. Like, the album's just fucking evil. And I really enjoy it almost being a caricature of evil. Um, I, I think uh, one of my favorite instances, like, one of the first lyrical moments that really took me off guard is on uh, one of my favorite songs on here, which is The Greatest Taste Around, where it... <laughs> opens with maybe one of the greatest one-two lyrical punches ever with I got fired by my boss I nailed Jesus to the cross which is just, just immediately <laughs> like um I'm, I'm, I'm sorry this. <laughs> it's also <laughs> like, like it, it's also like pe pe uh, um, peppered with these like Pepsi Pepsi <laughs> samples Pepsi. <laughs> and it's it's just so gleeful and I don't know there's just a way that like a lot of the sounds and it definitely re reminded me of what I've heard from people like 10 tricks point never and stuff that it's just like oh wow this album really was in a, many ways ahead of its time and some of the more like original parts of it that don't combine already existing things but yeah you already mentioned stuff like voice inside my head which is just really plays up that whole demented sort of evil over the top part of the album that I really like um also, uh, I, I really like, uh, I, I think Happy, I, I, I enjoy Happy Hero enough. I think I'm probably in the middle of everybody's like, uh, just, you know, liking it, hating it. I'm just like, I, I think it's good, but maybe not as good as uh, the things that surround it. I think another thing, it might just be because I've been listening to a particular album by this band a whole lot lately, but like a lot of the more uh, original contributions and the stuff that's like made to sound like jingles and um, just stuff that's obviously uh, put into all of these. Uh, it, it sounds a lot like the Beach Boys to me. I don't know if I've just been listening to a lot of pet sounds recently, but like a lot of the whole like just sort of like the peppy spiritedness of just like it, it really wouldn't feel out of place to just suddenly hear like, wouldn't it be nice if yeah. we could wake up? No, I think, <laughs> like, I think, that, I think, that, I think, I think that's an aspect that is, is really interesting to pick up on because like the aesthetic of the Beach Boys and that kind of like what gets um, maybe, maybe unfairly reductively reduced to kind of like this kind of sheer positivity of, of that kind mm. of music and also like where the beach boys were at in the 90s in this era which was this kind of like hollow shell of its former self where brian wilson was yeah. gone and it was just mike loves cl love club um and and that sort of sound is, is what i think a lot of the um commercialization is the, the vibe of a lot of the commercials and the advertising of this era as well this kind of like peepy happy um you know, everyone's smiling and we're at the beach and we're having a great day and I'm, I'm going to open up a Pepsi because that's the perfect cap to this beautiful utopian experience I'm having. Um, and and you, you would imagine that some kind of like um, Beach Boys knockoff thing would be playing or even the Beach Boys itself. I mean, when I was a kid, one of the earliest kind of advertisements I can remember is a, a Cadbury chocolate ad where um, the entire world is made of chocolate. Uh, and and the music was um, wouldn't it be nice?
by the Beach oh. Boys, <laughs> except it was instead of it was like instead of instead of wouldn't it be nice if we were older? It was wouldn't it be nice if the world was Cadbury? And and it went, <laughs> it went on and on and on like that. And you could if you could take if I could source that and put it like and and find that and just play it to you, it, you would think it was like a dis. It, you would think it was a negative land track. It's like so bluntly like well, this is some this brand is a utopian ideal and whatever and um you know so that aspect of commercialization that I am I understand was kind of like a huge focal point of a lot of satire and humor in the 90s uh, and that kind of burgeoning kind of postmodern art era where you were reacting to a lot of consumerist stuff and that was the focal point of a lot of art is uh again really neatly folds into this album and like I said it's like a time capsule in that way I think it also yeah. plays into like a lot of what the Beach Boys do like originally because you listen to an album like Pet Sounds and I do think at that album in some respects sort of gets um unfairly maligned as being like this you know the happy very pretty sounding album and then you listen to all the songs and it's just like wow I want to fucking kill myself it's just like wouldn't it be nice as a song that's just like hey isn't the inevitability of time fucked up yeah, it's yeah. just like oh yeah wow all of these songs are about an existential crisis and one, that's one sort of, of the same energy one, Best, yeah, no, it up on in the Beach Boys brainwashed and biopic is when he plays God Only Knows for the first time to his father, and his father says it sounds more like a suicide note than a love song. It's just so that... <laughs> funny. Yeah, that's 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 definitely one of them. And you know, personally, you know, I, I go back and I listen to an album like this over again, and I I fully expect the novelty to wear off. Um, but that didn't really happen to me here. I just think that a lot of the actual techniques, instrumentation, like I think the musical ideas are here enough for me to enjoy this as just sort of like it's not something I'm going to like put on just you know casually or, or whatever but it's just like it, it, it's still something that I, I am decently compelled by and it's not like a one-trick pony but in that same vein it's also just like if you told me it was just like it's the worst fucking shit I ever heard in my life I couldn't stand a single second of this I'd be like yeah that checks I mean <laughs> it's like hey do you want to watch an hour and a half of the commercial breaks from Robocop it's like well I mean like maybe I don't know it, it, some of them could be funny but like an hour that sounds like but and this is 40 right, minutes but, but then like same principle that, mo yeah. that yeah, movie no. is Starship Troopers and that's an, an incredible film yeah the same so. it's, it's like those little ad breaks that you get in those it's just like that is what the whole album here again is. speaking to a cultural yeah. moment in art same year as as the same movie. year that's yep. true oh. yep yep yeah no, it's very I mean, garish. Yeah, and that that garishness, that the just crushing weight of it is what's so almost endearing about it that it's just like fuck yeah, this shit sucks. Yeah, and I mean gonna... like and just to speak to that hopelessness of it as well, one of my favorite moments on the record is um the short track humanitarian effort. We are, yeah. you, have, you have this uh, sample of um, an employ uh, presumably an employee of um, the, or no, not, not an employee necessarily, but like someone commenting on um, Coca-Cola and Pepsi and, and whatever. And they basically, they allude to this true fact, which was that the Mexican federal police would waterboard suspects with Coca-Cola because yeah. they would shake it up and shove it up their nose and it would be like a form of torture. Oh, and God, that's fucked. Basically, this person yeah. saying, "Well, actually, Coca Cola is kind of a humanitarian company because they're changing their formula to so that when there's less carbonation <laughs> in it, so this method of torture can no, might not be useful anymore." So, in that sense, Coca Cola is kind of a humanitarian company. Like this is what the person is saying, and it's, that's oh, really God. funny and morbid and, oh, yeah. and fucked yeah, up. Yeah, and, and it's, it sounds like completely out there but given how much people in recent years have rationalized terrible ideas um it rings very true yeah exactly and what i like about it is that they just put this sample in here and they don't comment on it because they don't need to comment on it it stands for itself and it's just this really kind of like morbidly funny aside um that i think is well placed in the album, especially going yeah. into Voice Inside My Head, which is that, again, as I said, like a descent into fucking 
hell. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it, it really is the the Pepsi commercial from hell. This <laughs> album. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Morgan, do you want to add anything to this conversation? Yeah. Uh, you're all wrong, and I'm right. That's what I'll add. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I don't fucking, I don't. The whole, my whole reaction to this album can be summed up in four words, which is, yeah, I get it. <laughs> it's just a, it is a, it is a bit, it is one bit. And they drive they drive it into the ground for forty two minutes, and I have a lot of respect for the artistry that goes into these kinds of records. I think it's really creative in the way that it goes about, you know, that that uh, the people involved with this record went about making it. Um, it's a it's a fascinating way of making an album. Uh, but the contents therein are I I found laborious and obvious, and I, I got nothing out of it. A um, bunch of stuff I already knew, <clears throat> jokes that were being made ten years prior in RoboCop, and that movie at least had the decency to explode a dude with a giant robot. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't have much to add. I no, just I, I don't fucking. I don't get it. I don't care. I, I do feel you. I feel. I feel you, Morgan. Like, cause that yeah. is not far away from the experiences that I've had with this record. Like I said, it, when it goes really off the wall, it gets to be quite interesting. But there are other points where it's like, you know, I. I, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> um, I, I just have something I. I, I want to ask August, right? Which okay, well, it's kind of appropriate. This is a plundophonics record where you have to troll deep to find like the samples you want to use. Um, because like August, where do you find the records you recommend <laughs> on this podcast? Because <laughs> I want to know. Uh, this well, is not a bad thing, by the way. I'm not complaining. No, uh, it's it's a lot of uh admittedly it's a lot of secondhand knowledge from my dad and some of it is just browsing forum posts for way way too long to find <laughs> interesting records sure uh, i i respect it hugely man like it's always interesting never in my life would i have ever listened to basshead ever if august had not recommended it mm. so i and mean I love we, that record, man. we need we need an approach we need a moment to appreciate the fact that august is introducing us to entirely new avenues of music yeah but at what thank cost <laughs> indeed uh dope shit all right let's move on then um favorite tracks and ratings for dat coke no no this that's I, I said it so you didn't have to. I appreciate um, it. I, I give both of those here. jokes a light five. Dis, dis Pepsi, that Coke, I get it. A See, I thought it was like the, a more of pun words, on the word, like dyspeptic. This. Like it's a dyspeptic attitude to advertising. Um, yeah, yeah, you could be right. That could be it. Um, I'll go what first. Did it be nice. Okay. Uh, I'll go first. Um, drink it up. Um, voice inside my head, aluminum glass. I'm a three favorite tracks. Least favorite is Happy Hero. Uh, I'm gonna give it a six. Uh, my three favorite oh tracks are the same as Tyler's. Um, and in terms of my least favorite, I'm gonna go with the opening because I just feel the least about it. Uh, I'm gonna give this record an eight. I don't have favorites or least favorites. Four. Fair enough. Uh, my favorites would be Voices Inside My Head, I Can't Believe It's L, and uh, probably a most successful formula. Least favorite 
it, it's hard to pick because a lot of it, because for me, it's a record where a lot of the experience is so holistic to it, mm, I guess. I would, I would agree. I, I guess I would say like uh, maybe Hyper Real, just being a shorter song. Uh, so that said, I would give it like a seven. Chilling. I think my three favorite tracks are uh, The Greatest Taste Around, Why Is This Commercial, and uh, Voice Inside My Head. Least favorite, um, probably, I think Drink It Up. Um, uh, yeah, and I give it a seven. So that's um, a 6.4 average. Uh, which is the same as Kick One, uh, Course and Fable, All Thoughts Fly, and Uprooted. All right. Dope Interesting. shit. Interesting. All right. Let us know at home what you think of this Pepsi. Uh, is, is it your favorite Negative Land record? Are there other ne Negative Land records we should check out? One thing I did note when I was looking at this is that Negative Land is still an active group. Like they're, yeah. still, they're still making records. Made an album last year. Um, their records are still getting positive reception. Um, so I might actually dig into um, some of their other stuff, which I look forward to doing. Um, I definitely think that I'd be interested to hear them working with a, maybe a broader concept. Um, I reckon that could land more for me. Um, but yeah, let us know at home if you're a fan of Negative Land, what we should check out, what your thoughts are. Um, and yeah, I believe next week's Record Club is Morgan's recommendation. And we'll be talking about... Uh, Jimmy Eat World's Clarity. Fantastic. Mm. An emo classic. Right. So that'll be a, a really awesome convo. So um, yeah, stick around for that. Go check out our other videos that we put out this week and the uh, by clicking on the channel name below. And yeah. Sersha, you can lead us out this time. Okay. Oh, yeah. Rock, yeah. Rock on London. Rock over Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that wrong? That's just Is that wrong. Did I get it wrong? You barely London. say it three times a week, <laughs> every week. Rock over London, rock on Chicago. Now you rock over London, rock on Chicago. Thermos, genuine brand. <laughs>